Tom Ford, an illustrious name in the design world, has left an indelible mark in the annals of fashion, especially with his scintillating perfume line. This line was a significant factor in the staggering $2.8 billion sale to Estee Lauder. But how did he magnify his brand to such gargantuan proportions? And now that he has parted ways with Gucci, what does the future hold for his legacy? Our journey into understanding Tom Ford's empire commences in 1994, the year he assumed control of Gucci. Although it's unusual to delve into a designer's past ventures while discussing their personal brand, in Ford's case, this backstory is absolutely crucial. 1995 was a pivotal year for Ford as he showcased his inaugural collection as Gucci's creative director, following his appointment in the preceding year. However, it was his subsequent autumn winter 95 women's collection that garnered unprecedented attention. In the mid 90s, Gucci was floundering, teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. Their fading reputation was overshadowed by the notorious murder of Guccio Gucci. But Ford's audacious move to instill a highly sensual ethos into the brand's identity acted as a defibrillator for the dying giant. Through provocative ad campaigns and runway shows, Ford managed to swing the spotlight back onto Gucci. Controversies sparked, but they only fanned the flames of public intrigue. As a result, Gucci grossed half a billion dollars in 1995, a figure that swelled to four billion by 1999. Ford's genius wasn't just confined to creative innovations, he masterfully meshed risque with the wearable, appealing to a broad spectrum of consumers. His designs often juxtaposed bold sexuality with refined, sleek lines bathed in a monochromatic palette. He swiftly garnered a reputation for blending raw sensuality with minimalist elegance. Additionally, his business acumen was undeniable. Not only did he steer Gucci away from a hostile takeover attempt by LVMH, but he also orchestrated the acquisition of Yves Saint Laurent in 1999, solidifying Gucci's position as a fashion behemoth. However, following internal disagreements, Ford and Gucci's then-leader, Domenico De Sole, took their leave from Gucci and its associated brands in 2003. Their collaboration resumed in 2005 when, in conjunction with Segna, they unveiled the Tom Ford brand. The foundation laid during their Gucci years significantly informed the business and marketing blueprint for Tom Ford. They meticulously crafted a business plan, roping in financial stakeholders like the Americana Amiram Group. The vision was clear. Offer a plethora of products, harness the potent allure of Tom Ford's signature sensual advertisements, and establish flagship stores, the first of which opened on Madison Avenue in 2007. 2006 witnessed the launch of Tom Ford's inaugural collection. Eschewing the traditional catwalk, Ford opted for an exclusive showcase, inviting a select clientele to a showroom preview. The apparel, produced in collaboration with the Zegna Group, catered to the creme de la creme with even basic items like socks boasting a hefty price tag. Using the BCG matrix as a lens, one observes that new businesses often start with products that are question marks, evolving into stars once they demonstrate profitability. In Tom Ford's case, interestingly, the brand debuted with several cash cows in the form of licensing deals. From sunglasses crafted by Marklin, emblazoned with the iconic tee, to fragrances and beauty products under Estee Lauder's Aegis, these collaborations underlined the weight the name Tom Ford carried in the fashion milieu. Yet every product released was meticulously curated, ensuring the brand's premium status remained untarnished. In the realm of fashion, Ford continued to prioritize exclusivity. This was evident when he launched his first women's collection for Spring Summer 11. Breaking from convention, the only camera allowed belonged to Terry Richardson. The intimate event featured not models, but Ford's close acquaintances, like Beyonce and Julianne Moore. Through this collection, Ford reasserted the power and sensuality his garments exuded. Ford's approach was intricately thought out, reminiscent of the marketing funnel. As he elucidated in a 2011 Oprah Winfrey documentary, he amalgamated elements he cherished, encapsulating them into the brand's identity. This strategic alignment seamlessly connected with the brand's earlier menswear collections. In conclusion, 
Tom Ford's journey from reviving Gucci to establishing his eponymous brand is a testament to his unparalleled vision and business acumen. At the pinnacle of the marketing strategy lies the awareness stage. Historically, businesses have used elements like perfumes to establish this initial awareness. Taking the example of the fashion industry, an elaborate fashion show could further entice the audience, drawing them further down the marketing funnel towards the consideration phase. This is especially true when the showcased apparel not only maintains brand authenticity, but also effortlessly integrates with an individual's pre-existing wardrobe. By ensuring commercial viability along with brand identity, customers are then led to the conversion stage, which in this context means physically visiting the store. Once there, they can appreciate the meticulous attention to quality, a hallmark that has been the company's cornerstone since its inception. However, the company doesn't halt its engagement there. To bolster the journey from mere conversion to cementing customer loyalty, they deploy strategic tools. An amalgamation of powerful brand association, such as with the iconic Tom Ford name, and consistently high-quality apparel ensures customers keep returning. Every season, they expect and receive dependable, high-end fashion, akin to premium brands like J. Crew or the Chic Brooks Brothers. Tom Ford, as a brand, embodies the essence of building a loyal and sustained customer base. This approach is characterized by its unwavering commitment to delivering quality consistently. While on the surface it may seem they prioritize stability over innovation, this is a deliberate choice. Though their clothing might not always stir the pot of creativity, they leverage endorsements from A-list celebrities like Beyonce and Jay-Z. These endorsements, more than mere brand endorsements, bring a trustworthiness to the brand, setting the stage for transforming first-time customers into lifelong brand advocates. This strategic move is reminiscent of Ford's previous successes at Gucci, and it's evident from Tom Ford's own admissions in an Oprah Winfrey documentary. There, he articulates that the company's overarching aim isn't solely to pioneer fashion trends, but to cement its position as a financially robust enterprise. Success, however, wasn't always guaranteed. Post their inaugural collection's triumph, they ventured into women's wear, spotting an untapped market potential. Yet the initial foray in 2012 wasn't greeted with accolades, but was deemed their most significant setback. Critics were quick to point out the collection's stark resemblance to past Gucci designs, and questioned the brand's relevance in the evolving fashion landscape. Resilience, though, is woven into the brand's fabric. The autumn-winter 2012 collection heralded a shift in aesthetic, from vibrant hues to a subdued Hollywood glamour palette. This transition was both a nod to Ford's cinematic achievements and a recognition of his expansive celebrity network. And it paid dividends. By 2013, with a strategic expansion into the Asian market, they boasted over 170 sale points globally, inclusive of their cosmetic line. However, success isn't linear. By 2019, sales figures indicated an unmistakable decline. Factors contributing to this downturn ranged from the brand's aesthetic feeling, a tad antiquated post the Me Too movement, to a consistent leadership team with no fresh perspectives. Absent of innovative products or major organizational changes, the brand felt static in a dynamic world. By autumn 2019, there were attempts to rejuvenate the brand's image. A few designs hinted at reinvention, but the majority harked back to previous hits, like the red velvet blazers reminiscent of Gwyneth Paltrow's 1996 ensemble. As Vogue aptly summarized, Tom Ford had gone tame. The global pandemic further exacerbated the brand's challenges. By 2022, murmurs of a collaboration with Goldman Sachs on business valuation gained momentum, culminating in the brand's acquisition by Estee Lauder for a whopping $2.8 billion. This monumental transaction marked Estee Lauder's maiden venture into fashion. Estee Lauder's immediate steps post-acquisition remain to be seen. However, considering Tom Ford's history of stringent quality control and brand stewardship, it's unlikely the new owners would make drastic changes. Tom Ford's brand ethos is characterized by its eponymous founder's vision and values, so any future direction would undoubtedly reflect this legacy. Currently, Tom Ford stands on the cusp of rebranding. 
With the financial backing of Estee Lauder, there's an untapped potential waiting to be realized. The Tom Ford name carries an inherent prestige, and with the right investments, there's no reason the brand won't soar to greater heights. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Ensure you subscribe and activate notifications to stay updated on more insights like this.